So it seems today we ran out of time on looking at um, how precisely to do the confounding between the interaction terms and the blocking. So what I'd like to do is quickly run you through that. So to set things up, as we did in class, we do the stat, DOE, and we're going to do a factorial. We're going to create a factorial design. Let's pretend for a moment that we're doing the same thing we did in class. We know that the gen we know what a generator what we want to do. So and remember that generator is um, ABC. So we simply do two level factorial. We go to the design. We know that we're going to do three replicates. We're going to doing a full factorial. Now we click on generator ABC. We press OK, and um, you have hereby set everything up adequately. Bam. It creates, Minitab magically sets up all of the blocks according to that interaction. And over here, look at this alias structure. Uh, we haven't really gotten into that, but um, here the block equals ABC. That's letting us know that uh, ABC interaction is confounded with the block. Now I'm going to put in a bunch of, these, these are uh, responses from 6.5, they're just not in order. And I go through. Let's let's simply run this like we always do. So thus far, the only thing we've done is outlined the generator or how we're building blocks. Instead of uh, doing blocks by material, we're doing it by treatments. So um, we we look at everything; it all looks good. Let, let's let's go ahead and uh, put in our normal, our half normal, and our four and one, and we basically do our analysis the same as we've been doing all this time. And you'll notice ABC is absent. That's because it's confounded with the block. Here, with this data, the block is not significant. The only thing that is significant is AC. And so if we uh, go down, we should see, here it is. AC is definitely uh, an outstanding standardized effect, both with absolute and normal. We look at the Pareto chart. Um, everything looks good. So we simply, what's changing here is we're interpreting. So our blocks are confounded with ABC, and AC is the significant interaction. So what might this look like if we wanted to do those uh, two blocks? We look at our number of factors there. We, we're, we're at four, and we're going to go to the design. It's going to be a full factorial. We'll learn what half fraction is coming up soon number of replicates, I don't know, let's say three, and our generator here, I can't remember off the top of my head what the generators are for the problem, but you can imagine, let's see, we have four, so it's an ABD, and let's say um, BCD. Now if we run this, um, four factors, we're running two interactions. All right, great. Now let's take a look at, take a look at the blocks column right here. What it's done is it's gone through and identify, whoops, we only have two blocks. What if I mess block one, block two, block three? Oh, right, because I didn't go down far enough. So block two, block four. So they've organized the blocks already, and if you go up to the alias structure, check it out. Block one is ABD, block two is BCD, block three is AC. So taking this approach, just by looking at, um, the, the, the blocks column in Minitab, we can see that it's automatically identified all four blocks for us. The question is, how could we do that on our own? Well, as a preview, let's let's check out, remember how we were confound, we were uh, organizing the blocks by ABD and by BCD? Uh, and this is just illustrative purposes, you're not going to actually do this. But let's take a look at what uh, the interact three-way interaction term is. A, B, D. So here it would be negative one, right? Because you have negative one, negative one, negative one. And then here it would also be negative one. And A, B, D here also negative one. And here also negative one. Are you seeing a trend here? Um, that for block three, it looks like A, B, D is always negative one. Now let's try it for B, C, D. B, C, D here is positive one. B, C, D here is positive one. B, C, D here is also positive one. And yes, of course, if you notice, 
there's going to be a trend. As a matter of fact, in block three, ABD is always going to be negative. BCD is going to be positive. Let's go down a little bit to block one and see if something changes. Here, um, block ABD is still negative one. However, BCD has gone now is negative one. And of course, if you go down, you'll you'll find that within each of the blocks, you're getting the same. You're getting oops, sorry. You're getting this same trend where the confounding interactions are all the same. Just for kicks, let's go down to block two, ABD. All right, here it is positive one. See how it's negative one times negative one. BCD negative one. Just keep on looking. Like like count them up. BCD is 1, negative 1, 1, so we multiply those together, we get negative 1, here it's 1, here it's 1. So you can see that, uh, and we'd find that if we went to block 4, we'd also have, they'd all have the same type of interaction. So this approach demonstrates how two interactions can be confounded with blocks in such a way that we have four total blocks and you can imagine it's basically just low of the first low of the first interaction high of the second interaction low of the first interaction low of the second interaction high of the first high in the second high in the first low in the second you can imagine the four combinations just in your head which i've demonstrated here so hopefully this quick video has provided you an insight into how to navigate mini tab and how it interprets the confounding between interactions and blocks, and how to navigate creating these designs. On our next video, we'll take a look at the magic that's happening so we can understand the confounding more in depth.